Titans, Monarch, and Milkweed Enthusiasts. I'm Rich Lund, and it's been a while since we've done this. Let's talk population status. Now, last time we did this was 2019. Why the pause? Well, the word pandemic is probably a satisfying enough answer for many of you at this point, but if you want further details, check out the behind-the-scenes episodes. Back in 2019, here's what the overwintering data looked like. And I remember how encouraging it was to see what looked like possible gains. Looking at the relative highs in the numbers and the relative lows in the numbers, we hope to see both of these highs and lows increasing. If both values are increasing, that could indicate to us possible gains in the overall monarch populations and also, indirectly, possible gains in the milkweed habitat. Well, that was five years ago. Where are we at now? What this graph shows, put out by monarchwatch.org, is the overwintering populations counted in hectares of the area that they occupy west of Mexico City. Well, let's look at the next four years that happened, taking us to 2023. I want to look here first because there is some encouraging news. While there was a significant drop in the population from 2019 to 2020, 6.05 hectares to 2.83 hectares, that population size was still larger than the year prior to the 2019 increase. It wasn't a severely troublesome drop, and in fact, it had been predicted, and some predictions thought it would be lower. Next, as the seasons went on, while we would hope for an increasing trend and didn't get one, we also didn't have a decreasing trend either. The two highs are near identical to each other, and the two lows are near identical to each other also. It looks like it indicates a stable population, even if it is just for those four quick years. And keep in mind also, during those four seasons, weather-wise, it came with its own challenges. Ice storms, hurricanes, high winds during the migration. Well, all of those losses, they're in this data too. And despite those losses, the population maintained. That's encouraging. But now, let's bite the bullet and look at the most recent season's data. Overwintering in Mexico during the 2023-24 season, the migratory populations comprised of nine colonies of monarchs took up 0.90 hectares. That's a very sobering number. Now let's give that number the respect it deserves, but first let's alleviate some of the grim and ominous. No, that is not a number that spells doomsday for the monarchs. For starters, Dr. Chip Taylor, a name that I very much trust from monarchwatch.org, he actually predicted that there would be a drop that season. A severe drought in the southern states and in New Mexico at just the wrong time during the migratory season when nectar producing flowering plants are needed to help fuel the monarchs on their drive. Next, while this is a low number, it's not the lowest we've ever seen. Now think about this, 0.9 hectares. Well, that's relatively close to 1.13 hectares, which was 2015's data. And the following year, we saw the largest increase in a 10 year span. So yes, 0.9 hectares, it is a number to take seriously, it's a concerning number, but also, we've seen worse. It's a number that can be rebounded from. We very much don't want to see a lower number next season. But let's talk frank about it. It is the lowest number we've seen in 10 years. And it's also the second lowest number that we've seen ever since they've been measuring. The worst it's ever been, 0.67 hectares, well that was the 2013-2014 overwintering season. And one of the motivating reasons why the Raising Monarch series got started. All right, a decade in, what can we glean from this? Well, again, we've seen worse. And just like at the start of this series, these conditions can be improved by the planting of milkweed. We've got more work to do. Second, the losses due to the drought that Dr. Taylor described, that's in this data. How much of this drop is really due to the drought, that can be in question. But if it was a single occurrence that caused it, well, then this may be a very recoverable population drop. It doesn't likely indicate some major loss of habitat that occurred. And something else to consider too, one of the reasons for the decade-long work of conservation, of trying to plant milkweed, trying to restore habitat, has been so that way we could get the population, hopefully, to a sustainable level to where when droughts and extreme weather events occur, the population is able to survive it. We knew it'd be a rough road with many challenges. Climate change-induced droughts are one of those challenges, and the population survived. A question worth considering, if people hadn't planted milkweed in the last 10 years because of the monarch's plight, where would this number be at? Would we even have a number? One way of looking at the entirety of the last decade and the efforts put in is akin to how I've sometimes had to address studying with my students. It's happened a couple of times in my career. A student decides they're going to put forth more of an effort. They start to double down in their studying. They want to get a better test result than the last one. So they buckle down, they put in good efforts, and then they get their next test results, and it's not a grade that they had hoped for. The test they worked even harder for turned out to be a grade lower than what they had expected they would get. And that can be a really critical time, because it could be interpreted the wrong way, that studying led to nothing. What I try to point out to the students during those times is, it's a really good thing that you did study. After all, if 
you thought the grade was going to be here and you studied really hard and it was only here, imagine if you hadn't studied where it would be at. Likewise, while 0.9 hectares is a very low number, let's stop and consider how low would that number be if we hadn't put in the last 10 years of efforts. That we still have a population to be talking about, I'd count that as a success. So moving forward this season, what can we expect to see? Well, with a low starting population, we should probably expect fewer sightings in our backyards this season. It can be spotty, it can be different from location to location, but we should expect it'll probably be lower here at first. But as with every season, those numbers are going to increase as the generations unfold, as the weeks continue. Again, I remind you, after 1.13 hectares in 2015, the next year saw a very large increase. We could see that again. It depends on if the milkweed is there for them or not. And from an individual's point of view, you might still have plenty of sightings. It can just depend on your location. I, for example, even though we have much lower numbers than usual, found two eggs on May 27th. That's pretty early for me. So yes, smaller numbers, and for some individuals, it may be a low year or even a barren year. For others, you might still have the same success. Backyard sightings and egg layings will only increase as new monarchs emerge and some new arrivals are still coming up from the south. But with all that said, then, let me leave you with this parting message. If this year is a lower number in raising monarchs for you, well, make it a milkweed-focused year instead. Keep in mind, what actually does help out the population as a whole is the habitat restoration. It doesn't matter how many monarchs we raise if they come back the next year to less milkweed. We've got to make sure that it's more every year. So maybe this is a year to check out your milkweed, see how that health is, and maybe consider expanding it. The point is, we still need to keep our sleeves rolled up. There's still plenty of work to do. So with such low numbers, let's double down, let's plant more milkweed, and let's make sure that they have more habitat in the coming seasons. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for checking out this population status video. And as always, thank you very much for your conservation efforts to help out the monarch butterflies. I'll see you next time.